And of course, you know, it used to be in, in the cinematic universe when you said Shane, you thought of Alan Ladd and the old Western. Now when you say Shane, you think of John Bernthal of The Walking Dead. Please welcome John Bernthal. That's all for you, I guess. Oh, there's two. You guys are ready to go. I know I'd have to say, ladies, calm down. Well, let me start with, uh, uh, with you, Lori. You've been part of some of the most iconic characters and universes out there. Is that by choice, or do you find yourself just cast that way? Um, I, does this work? It does. Um, I, I think it's just kind of worked out that way. Um, you know, it's a really strange thing. When I started my career, I was playing the girl next door. And whenever any tough girl parts would come along, they'd say, oh no, she's the girl next door, she can't play tough. And then I played one tough thing, and then every, every, ever since then, everyone's like, oh, she's a badass. So, you know, they, they, they call me for the badass roles. How many people wish she was the girl next door when you were growing up? <laughs> John, I was reading online about uh, whether Shane was actually going out to murder Rick in the, in the, uh, um, uh, in the final scene of, of your character. And some people were arguing that he was actually going out to end his own misery. That he was just too miserable and he never really intended to kill Shane. He just wanted, he, uh, he never really intended to kill Rick. He just Maybe wanted he to, kill him. to kill Shane. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, he wanted to kill Shane, right. Uh, is, was this a suicidal moment for, for Shane or was it murderous? Man, I don't know. I, I think it was all. Uh, it was a lot of things. I, th uh, um, I, I think that that. Uh, wow, it's much louder when you do that. <laughs> but you, can you hear me when I do that? Because that's annoying as hell, isn't it? Is that good or is it? You'd have to ask them. This, uh, which, which do you want? Uh, I think. I think. Look, I think there was a little bit of that. Uh, um, I, I think Shane. Um, it. it I think when in the scene with uh, Lori, um, when she tells him thanks, not 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 this Lori. Oh, you're waving to the camera. She's always waving to the camera. She's not listening to a word I'm saying. Uh, I think that uh, <laughs> I think that um, when when he he talked to Rick's wife Lori and she thanked him finally, sort of for everything. I, I, to me, I think that was kind of everything Shane was waiting. To hear, and at that point, you know, it was really about getting rid of Randall, getting rid of this threat to his baby because it is his baby. And uh, <laughs> I know that sucks, right? But but uh, uh, um, I, I I I do think a big part of it was it's it's time to to rid the world, to rid this family that he loves so much of this problem, which is in fact himself, and it's time to make Rick act and make Rick do something to, to embody a little bit of a little bit of shame to, to in order for him to take care of the baby that he feels is his. I don't know, that's, that, I, I think that's in there. I hope it's in there. Andre, I, I was watching an interview with you online and you said that you wrote a biography of your character when you first started out because you wanted to flesh out who this character was, what was she pre-apocalypse, and, uh, and that might set out the trajectory of who she will become. Tell us about what, what you wrote up for her. Oh, well, I wouldn't even know where to start because it was like 30 pages and it would be snooze But each letter was like this big. <laughs> You're so funny, John. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, well, you know, in the comic book, you don't really learn a lot about certain characters like Andrea before the apocalypse. So, um... I basically just wanted to kind of know what she was about, and she, you know, she was a career woman, she wasn't married, um, she was a, a human rights lawyer, um, so she really cared about people. Um, I think that she was really driven, so she, there was a wedge in her family, which is why she went on this road trip with her sister, because she was trying to make up for lost time. So just kind of filling in the gaps so that, um, so that she would just be, you know, more of a three-dimensional character. 
John on Conan, I think it was, you were talking about some of the awkwardness of your initial sex scene in season one of The, uh, of the Walking Dead. And but, there, said, but there was no awkwardness in the high end eye. That's what I was wondering. <laughs> there was no evil awkwardness here. I, they were apparently calling out pervert, pervert for your segment, but I was wondering if Andre got the same treatment or, or what happened there. I was wondering if Lori got the same treatment, and, because apparently when you were filming your sex scene, you said nothing makes you feel more like a pervert than people yelling, quit thrusting, quit right. thrusting. <laughs> but, but in the car scene, it was initiated by Andrea, by uh, Lori's character, so I'm wondering, did they treat her the same way? Did they, they yell, less movement, less movement, or something? Well, j just for the record, numero uno, I was wearing a cup, I wanted her to know that. I was, and not so she would think it felt a certain way to protect myself. Are we gonna do break it? And just so you know, just so you know as well, uh, there, there, there was, um, there was, there was quite an, uh, an extended version of that scene that didn't make it into the cut. Yes. Um, uh, there, there was cameras inside the Hyundai. No, we really went for it in the network film. So. Yeah, got nixed. And, and, and I, I do feel, I, there's no, I'm, I, there's no way to not sound like a jerk, so I'm just going to dive in. You're going to yeah. be a bear being grizzly, right? I, look, I, you know, in that scene, I think that, you know, not to sound like a, I hope there's not kids here. There's probably kids here. But if you're letting your kids watch The Walking Dead or something out there. There's, uh, for, for, for that scene, um, you know, I think that we have a responsibility uh, for this show. Um, I, I think it started when, when Frank started the show in the first place. We really wanted this to be, um, we really wanted to be, this to be more, more than your, your, your typical show. We wanted to kind of go for it. And look, there's certain rules and regulations when it comes to cable. Um, on HBO, it's just like, what was that joke? So, so the point is, is that, is that we don't, we, you know, we, we, th there are rules that we have to follow uh, on our show. Um, as far as, I mean, when it comes to violence, we can show whatever we want. Okay? A little girl gets her head smoked, I mean, it's like, cool. But for sex, it's, it's really, really specific what you can and can't show. And that was the whole thrusting thing with, with Sarah Wayne Callies. But I feel like we have a responsibility to sort of take it further. And, you know, when we do a sex scene um, on that show, I think that, you know, we tried to do it in a way that would be sort of just as, uh, just as nasty as something that you would see, see on HBO, except we can't, you know, do that. So, so <laughs> we try to figure out ways to do that, but I think we went a little bit too far without showing anything. I just think we did kind of nasty stuff. Well, I guess I didn't. No, I didn't do anything nasty. Dude, you were so... Yes, you did. No, John. Anyways, I, I was nasty. actually... I'll be honest. I was really proud of that scene. I thought we creatively... Come on. It was I'm awesome. sure you were proud. such a jerk, dude. I swear it was cool. It was badass. But it was too... It, 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 I guess, crossed the line of nastiness. But we had to figure out a way. How can you be... You know, like, how, like, how would you have sex in a zombie apocalypse? I mean, what, you're going to light candles and, and you know... <laughs> Start with a massage? No. I mean, you gotta, you know, so, I'm, I'm, I'm. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. We, we went for it, and, and um, it's, it's, it's really kind of, you know, interesting because for two people who kept all of our clothes on, we shot the scene with all of our clothes on. It got nixed by the network. And it got nixed by the network because it was too. Um, but now, like, what we're just little things. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so now the unrated DVD is going to yeah, skyrocket. I don't even know if it's like too crazy it. for the DVD. Yeah, yeah. That's amazing with all those heads exploding, little kids dying. Isn't that crazy? That's, yeah, that is a, a lot bit, about our society. A bit bizarre there. Yeah. Uh, I want to talk, talk to you, Lori, about your character accidentally shoots Daryl at one point. Yes. Uh, I can only imagine how horrifying there's been actually a lot of horrible real life stories about people accidentally and deadly shooting people of late in their otherwise. But your character doesn't seem to change much after she accidentally shoots. I said, oh, shit. We talked about hardcore. What happened? What are you talking about? I said, I was sorry. I was felt so bad. Everyone hated my guts. It was awful. It just, I, 
I just get the impression she's not overly careful with her no, no, firearms. No, no. Here, here's the deal: is that I think that Andrea, um, you know, she was a sad sack for a long time, suicidal, angry, bratty. And I think she just finally was like, you know what, I gotta get it together. I really want to survive. And she just, her ambition was ahead of her. Like she, 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 she trained and she practiced. She learned from the best, but she still, you know, wasn't on top of her game. And Daryl was a horrible, horrible mistake. But I think that you know, after Daryl, I think that she was just constantly you know, working harder and harder and harder so that nothing like that would ever happen again. I think that Andrea's got the shot down now. Why aren't the other women following her example? I haven't, I mean, Andrea's the, the alpha female of this, of this group trying to learn how to survive, and the rest, you know, one episode, they're kind of busy making dinner and doing washing and things, and I'm thinking, you could throw that away and get new stuff. Why, why do you think Andrea's the stand out there? Well, you know, it's a, it's a different interpretation of what's an alpha female. I mean, Sarah Wayne Collins is a Plays Lori. She's an alpha female. I mean, you know, Andrea is a. Prior to the apocalypse, we were the same women. When you think about it, I mean, Andrea was a go-getter. She was about about her career. She didn't have a family. She was out there, you know, really, you know, trying to survive in the workforce. Um, where the character of Lori was a homemaker, and I think that, um, you know, Lori's really good being the matriarch and. and that community together, and I think Andrea is a, a go getter and athletic, and she's like, I can play with the boys and I'm going to protect this camp. So I think that they both have, um, you know, value, and I think they're both alpha females, they're just different. And like that, that, that scene that I had where, you know, that cat fight I had with Lori, um, you know, I think that, that there's valid sides of both women's arguments. Question for both of you then. And this has been driving me nuts since the opening of The Walking Dead. Um, why doesn't anyone seem concerned about flying fluids? Why aren't you guys wearing some sort of shield or something when you're splaying heads if any part of the fluid or any scratch can infect you? That's cool. don't, don't you guys wonder the same thing? I'm always thinking, you're in a t-shirt, you can get scratched. Wear car hearts, for God's sake. All right. Well, uh, let me ask you this. I, I know that you've been very focused on real life charities. Some of the some of the themes of The Walking Dead are, you know, what makes us human, what happens when society breaks down, uh, you know, when does human compassion end, and when does it start up again in horrible circumstances? And I, I know that you've been very focused on some worldwide charities where they're dealing with societies that have broken down, where, where kids aren't being fed, where there's a, a real life nightmare. Uh, describe some of that for us. This is all IMDb. I, was, I, was, I, I read that you were very focused on... They're liars. They change your birthday. They change your bios. Those guys are frauds. All right. Um, you heard it here first. No, but no. What's the, what's the question? I do work for charities. Right. Well, what charities and, and why? Because most of the reason, I, I think a lot of people are fans of The Walking Dead because they see this apocalyptic world and they wonder, how does human nature change? But we do have some places that are kind of real life like that. Oh my God, very much monstrous so. human beings. And I was wondering, you know, uh, how you try and apply that, that fame and, and other things to causes that you believe in. Um, well, well, the number one cause that I support is uh, trafficking, um, uh, to save children, uh, women and children that have been trafficked. And for those of you who don't know what trafficking is, it's when um, there are 27 million people enslaved in the world today, which is kind of hard to believe because you always think that this was something that ended a long time ago. Um, and there's lots of different kinds of slavery. There's domestic slavery, um, but there's a, a huge market for sexual slavery, and um, and they do this with very small children, and they sell them in markets throughout the world. Um, and in a lot of poor countries, um, mothers are selling their children for two dollars, or they're kidnapped off the streets. So um, I've lived in Africa and spent a lot of time in Cambodia, and um, met the most incredible people who uh, want to bring this horror to light uh, so that people will take more action. Um, but I do think that, um, you know, we live a a amongst an apocalypse. I think our economy sucks. I think that there's a lot of, you know, terrible things happening in the world. And, um, you know, I think what I've always liked about our show is that it's really a morality tale. It's a study of the human condition. It's like, who are you going to be? 
you know, when the chips are down and you're pushed to the edge, are you going to be a leader? Or is your best self going to come out? Or are you going to are you going to fold? You know, are you going to embrace the dark side? And speaking of that, um, the, the dark side of things, do you feel like your John? Do you feel like your character Shane died the way you would have wanted him to? I know they deviated from the comic, but do you wish things would have been different for your character on his way out? What do you mean? Do you wish he'd have died in some other way? You wanted to be in my arms. <laughs> uh, yeah, look, I, 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 um, I do. I mean, look, I, I, I wish that um, you know that that ending, that that ending was a very, uh, it was a very sort of heated time. I, I had a, a kind of an alternate, I had a, a an alternate ending that I thought would have been, um, would, uh, that I thought was cooler. Um, you know, um, I think one of the things that's really cool about our show is, um, about my, the, the show that I used to be on, was that, uh, um, was that it, 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 it is a very much, uh, from the beginning, it's, it's been very much, of, uh, it's a very much a collaborative show, and, and um, there's a lot of ideas that kind of flow from everywhere, and anybody can sort of give an idea, and, and I feel like ideas actually do carry weight in our herd. Um, and I, I, I don't know how close they might have. They, they might have lied to me really well and made me feel good about it. But I feel like we might have gotten really close to my ending, but we didn't. We didn't. We didn't quite. Get it. What was that idea you had? What? How did you want to see your character go? Okay, my ending, right? So, so my, my my ending was uh, my ending was. I'm gonna take my hood off. So so my my ending was basically, and you you gotta realize when you're when you're. Um, you, you have to make as few changes as, as possible and uh, you know when you're trying to change a, a, a script but the way that um, my idea it was very much sort of related to your first question what I wanted it to be is the same thing I talked to Lori she tells me thanks I say I got to get rid of that Randall guy take him snap his neck go to everybody everything's the same no changes yet that's how you I got to pitch the writers too because you don't want to say too many changes so no changes yet kill kill Randall go to Rick you say, uh, I hope everybody's seen the, the whole season, because I really ruined it everybody. But, uh, um, so you go, go to Rick, you say, Randall's escaped, we start looking for him. We go out in the woods, we start looking for him, and I just stop. Same as always. He says, why are you stopping? we got to find the prisoner. And I say, no, we don't. I killed the prisoner. I snapped his neck. It's what you should have done. He and me start squaring off, and he says, what are you doing, brother? And I say, I'm here to kill you, I'm here to take your life. You just checked your phone in the middle of my ending, man. You're not interested at all in my ending. That's not true. You know what I mean? He's like, oh my God, I love it. Not true at all. It's just so insecure about my ending as it is. Now listen to this. The last panel was went over, and so I'm, I'm, I'm trying to make sure that the audience has a chance to ask I'm sorry. Questions. Okay, okay, okay. Really quick. No, no, really no. Quick. I'm not wanting you to hurry. I'm asking myself to shut up. That's oh, all. Brother, so, brother. so you finish up. I'm, I'm really interested. <laughs> anyway, so I'm in the woods with Rick, right? And, and he says, uh, we start to square off. I, I, I say, I killed, I killed Randall. I killed the prisoner. It's what you should have done. He, I pulled the gun on him. Same thing. No changes yet. No changes yet. Then he says to me, just like he did, uh, what are you doing? I thought we already went through this. If you're gonna have to kill, if you wanna kill me, you're gonna have to kill an unarmed man, just like he did. But instead of what he did, he's gonna take his gun and throw it, stand there like he does, brilliantly. That makes Shane go crazy, and Shane for, pushes into Rick and, 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 and charges him and says, you know, you, your son, you have a weak boy, you have a broken woman, and maybe says something really nasty, like, I tasted your wife, or something really <laughs> awful, but it's something awful Shane-like thing to say. And he pushes and pushes and pushes him, driving the, the gun into his face. Rick stabs him, same thing. Shane falls down. Rick does his whole thing, this is you, not me, which was so beautiful, what Andrew Lincoln did. And then, so beautiful what he did. And my God, that dude is freaking crazy because you didn't see him whispering in my ear and putting on this performance that startled the shit out of me. Like, he, I think he's like, you're, you're the wolf man. You're the wolf man. I mean, it was the craziest shit I ever saw. I, I told him, I said, dude, that was the best acting I've ever seen in my life. Unfortunately, I'm the only one who will ever see it. But my God, was that badass. Anyway, so you, you're giving me a look like I should shut up too. You, you see the insecurity about my ending? Point is, the point is, he says this whole thing, and then while that's going on, Shane starts to come back to zombie life. He starts to reanimate. When he gets up, 
when he starts to get up and approach Rick, Rick's throwing his gun. So he grabs Shane's gun and he points it at Shane. As, to Zombie Shane. As Zombie Shane's coming towards him. And Rick goes, click, click, click. Out of nowhere, Carl comes, blasts him. Shane, Rick, Rick opens the, the gun, there are no bullets in it. So in fact, Shane did take him out there. And in a way, it's the most disgusting thing you could do to somebody. It, it's the most selfish and selfless thing that you could do at the same time by, by, by sort of poisoning his conscience and sort of making Shane live forever in him. But you know what, I think we kind of achieved the same thing without it being, you know, it got rejected. So anyways, that was kind of, Actually, I think that's totally wrong. For the record, I thought there was going to be a time person over there in the dark waving when we were at a half past. That's the whole purpose of my phone. But we do want to open it up to, uh, to some audience questions. I understand there's three microphones out there, somewhere in the dark. One there, one back there. Oh, there's two. Sorry. One third of you just got eliminated. <laughs> Let's start on this side. Hi. So, Lori. I just want to say I love... I'm over here, you just can't see me through the water bottles. <laughs> nice to see you. Oh, hi! <laughs> I just want to say that the way... I mean, I know the writers give you the words, but the way you put them out has been spectacular. The way you tackled the nature of suicide and how you can handle things and how strong you are. The only thing that makes me more excited than what I've already seen is the idea of seeing you with Michonne. That's gonna be great. And John, your ending was good. It was better, I think, a little bit. Thank you. Mystery voice over there. All right, this one's for John. So, I got a quick question about the way you died. <laughs> So, when you were shot in the head by this kid that at one point could have been, like, your, your son, in a way, when you were shot, how did that kind of affect your, your conscience? I mean, like, I know that you're not really shame, but, like, as the actor, it's like, like, did you think that was a little screwed up, or what? <laughs> well, you know, I mean, uh... When he shot me, I was a zombie, you know, and, and, and uh, still, I mean, for, for, <laughs> it's still you. It's just your. No, 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 no. I hear, but when you're a zombie, you wear contacts, you can't see anything anyway. So I, I, I figured it was Kirkman who shot me. You know, I don't know, but, 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 but you know, you know, I uh, look, man. When I, when I, when I got this job. I was so excited, I, you know, the, the, this show is the greatest show in the world. I, I, when I knew I was going to be working with Frank Darabont, nothing in the world could have made me happier. Um, I, I fought like a, I fought so hard to get this job, and I finally get it, and they say, hey, by the way, it's based on this awesome graphic novel, you should check it out. So I go home, and I'm sitting, um, I read when I go to the bathroom, you know, so I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to crack this open and start it. By the end of that one seat on the bathroom, I saw that he doesn't last very long, and I saw, in fact, how he goes. So, man, I kind of, I kind of knew it was coming, brother. You know what I mean? I kind, I, I kind of, I, I had, I came to grips with it. And if you're asking me, I think your ending's way better. So, yeah. Thank you, brother. I appreciate you. Thank you. Uh, first off, I just want to say thanks for being here, guys, uh, taking your time out of your hectic schedules. Um, the, uh, yeah, I'm telling you, being an actor is probably not easy. So, um, anyway, it's the character development of your two characters, I think, is, is brilliant by you two. Um, there was a point, though, John, where Shane, after he kills Otis, really kind of goes off that deep end. Now, as an actor, did you really kind of study the effects of, because it looks like he went through an effect of, like, PTSD. Did you study that, or is that just something that clicked with you? How, how did you develop that as a character? You know what, uh, brother? I've I've, uh, I've 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 studied it in the past. I actually I, I, I did a movie. Uh, well, n nobody's ever seen it, but I, I I did a movie where I played a guy who, who really suffers from that, and that did definitely. Um, Mary, Mary. <laughs> shut up. <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, the, 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 the 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 point is, is uh, yes, but but you know I think one of the cool things that I uh, one of the cool gifts I got acting wise is in this process I knew. 
I knew, I knew when I was gonna die. So, um, you know, most times you do a TV show, you crack open a script, you're like, oh shit, I'm gonna die? You know, like, I gotta, I gotta go get a job, you know? But like this, I knew, I knew, you know, and so I could really kind of carve out beginning, middles, and ends, and, and, and kind of, you know, showing colors, not sound like the most pretentious, douchey actor ever, but I could show colors along the way. And so for me, man, I think one of the, the first, I think that was kind of where he, actively decided to kind of go in a different direction. But see, I think it was when he beat Ed down by the side of the water in, in, in season one. You know, he, he's, he, it was this great opportunity to physicalize what was going on inside of him. You know, she says, stay away from me, stay away from my kid. Then I see this guy lay his hands on her and the other women. And then it's like, don't do that, ha, ha. And then you're like, wait a second. This is a zombie apocalypse. I don't, I, there's no one to answer to. This feels good. There are no rules. <laughs> and you can get... So it's the, it's the cop who's actually able to just go past that then at that point. I, I just think the realization of, you know, the, I think he's the first character to really become a creature of this world. To realize that, you know, that, you know, that it is, there, there are no laws. And, and things like emotion and things like trying to do the right thing only slow you down, slow you down, and 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 are a hindrance to survival. I think that's a very dark, uh, um, inhuman sort of way to look at the world, and I think it's because she is such a human at the end of the day and has such a big heart that that was kind of eventually his downfall. He, I think, once he shaved his head, and the the moment that you're talking about is when he said, "I'm, I'm really going to block off feelings like shame or guilt or trying to be good that that doesn't exist anymore." But I think he starts to discover it. When he, when he beats down Ed, you know, and he loves doing that. Awesome, thank you. Thank love you, you as an actor, good luck on your next project. Thanks, man, I appreciate it, bro. Thank you. Lori, let me follow that up with you, Your you character um, and her near suicide, did you, do you consider that more of a, uh, of a suicidal feeling that she had, or did she want to claim independence? When she wanted to kill herself, right. Was it, was it more about suicide or was it more about this world's so crazy, I'm not in charge of anything, I want to be in control of my own destiny? Um, I think she wanted to kill herself. I mean, I, I, I think it, there was so much going on. I mean, I think, I think that when Amy died, um, I mean, it was beyond grief and guilt uh, for uh, not stopping it, not um, being able to protect her. Um, you know, I never got to say goodbye to my parents. And, you know, to be honest, when we went into the CDC and met Jenner, um, what he said made a lot of sense. This is a quick, easy, painless way out. But, you know, you know I, I didn't really know these people very well. It was just my sister and I, and, you know, this lovely man, Dale, who I'm, I, to the day I die, I will always feel bad, or Andrew will always feel bad for, giving him such a hard time, but, um, you know, I think she really genuinely wanted to check out, and when she was forced to stay with the group, and, and you know, Dale blackmailed her, you know, pretty much, and said, you know, I'm going to stay unless, unless, you know, you get up and go, I mean, I think she just, she was angry for quite some time, and thank God she got over that. Let's go over here. I'm a huge fan of the graphic novels, and as you know, they vary differently from the series, which I really, really appreciate, because it gives the series to me, the television series, a whole new view. But how do you deal with things like in the graphic novels where Andrew and Dale are a couple and his life gets eaten and things like that, compared to your series? Do you have any say in what happens since they are differing at all? Um, well, I mean, I always thought that Dale was gonna end up being there for a long time. I always thought we'd end up together romantically because that was the graphic novel. Um, and uh, you know, I remember, I remember when we started the season, and I was getting all these pages of me being just such a, you know, bitch to him. <laughs> I uh, tried to stretch that out because there might be children. Um, I, uh, <laughs> but I would say to them, you know, guys, I hate being, you know, I hate being such a witch to him. Like, I can't stand this. They were like, don't worry, it'll pay it off, it'll pay off. 
And uh, I just never anticipated for it to go down the way that it did, and I didn't know, nor did anybody, until um, halfway through the season. And um, you know, it's an organic process, and things change. I I have to say there was absolutely no acting required when uh, we shot this scene where Dale died. We shot it over two nights, and just to see this beautiful man who I love as a friend, who I've done you know three projects with. Um, have his guts, you know, being torn apart on the ground. Uh, to know that this beautiful character of Dale was no longer going to be part of The Walking Dead, I mean, it was just, it was heart-wrenching, you know? And uh, that, was a, that was a very hard loss for our show. Um, you have to understand, my character doesn't know that Shane's gone yet, so I will greet you. <laughs> <laughs> Hey guys, thank you for being here. Uh, John, nice hood. What'd you say? Nice hood. Oh no, you too, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so this is sort of a lazy question because I could IMDB it, but it's better hearing it from you guys. What other upcoming projects do you have, TV, film, or otherwise? Oh, he never stops working. Well, that, that's because you didn't get fired off The Walking Dead. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, I, have a, I have a movie, um, right after Walking Dead I did a really cool movie called um, Snitch, which um, is uh, with Dwayne Johnson and me and Susan Sarandon and Benjamin Bratt and Barry Pepper and Michael Williams, who was Omar in The Wire, he's on, he's on Boardwalk Empire, he's a, he's a ninja, he's so good. And so that, that movie's going to be, um, that movie's going to be really cool. And then, um, I'm doing now, I'm doing a movie called 42, which is the Jackie Robinson movie. And uh, I used to play baseball, so that's kind of a lifelong dream of mine to be in a baseball movie, play baseball player. And um, I'm going to be one of his best friends, one of his teammates. Um, and then, uh, most, most uh, importantly, um, by far, is Frank Darabont, the man um, who uh, created The Walking Dead. I'm doing his new show, L.A. Noir, um, which is really I would, I would follow Frank anywhere, and I'm, I'm so thrilled that you let me follow him, because he is the man, so. Thanks for asking that question, bro. Thank you. And I take it you're taking up with The Walking Dead season three. That's, that's what's on your agenda. Yes, yes. I and cannot wait for that. Why don't you guys just start filming now, uh, and just. Uh... Yeah, you can say that. <laughs> yeah, we that can, we time. can. Everybody wants it, don't you? It's so much better to film this. Now, how about Walking Dead Seattle? So that way we'd have something to watch in the meantime. That would be nice, too. Oh, that would be nice. Let's go over here. Hey, John, Lori, thank you so much for coming out here. You guys are great. I love the show. I had a question about season three now that you mentioned it. Uh, just possible spoiler alert. Uh, do you know, to your knowledge, is Shane going to come back in like a flashback episode or a dream sequence or anything like that? And uh, since Shane and Andrea have sex in the car, uh, uh, do we, are we going to find out if uh, Andrea will end up pregnant, like Lori? I think season three is about their love child. I mean, Shane is just <laughs> unbelievable. <laughs> Right after I pitched that, but, but yeah, I think it's yeah, she's pregnant. But I think Lori and Andrea are both pregnant. Yeah. Yeah. And she's the baby daddy. I don't. I don't think. I don't think she has to come back. You never know. Thank you. Thank you. One last question over here. Uh, hi guys. Thank you so much for being here. I love the show. It's so great. Um, I guess my question is more of a kind of open-ended comment, mostly for Lori. Um, I thought it was really interesting how it was mentioned that, that Lori, or Andrea's character, or Andrea, is uh, like an alpha female, uh, just because really she's violent and because she's out there with the rest of the men shooting things, and then you have Lori, the character, who is kind of the matriarch in the kitchen and holding everything together, and uh, 
I just was wondering how how you feel about the gender relationships in The Walking Dead and how that has been for you working with the script and seeing the comic book and how that is played out. Um, you know, I, I think what I love, I mean, there's so much that I love about our show, but I feel like everybody was so hand-picked and perfect for their part. And what I love about the graphic novel and the show is that every character is so different than, than, than the other person. Um, everyone's from a different walk of life, different skill sets, and, um, you know, I don't know, is it a gender issue? I mean, you know, now, now, we, got, now we got a second badass on the show uh, with Michelle, and who I cannot wait to work with. Um, but uh, I think we're going to see more women in action. And, uh, you know, I think over time you probably see Carol get more aggressive and, and Maggie and, you know, the rest of them. I think, um, you know, they'll, they'll have their moment. They'll have their moment. That about wraps up our time, but uh, here's what I want to do. I want uh, Seattle to wish Lori well for season three of The Walking Dead. Let's hear it for Lori. And let's hear how excited Seattle is for L.A. Noir, right here with John.